welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I have an eating disorder. Hi Shani. Hi. Oh, if you've never seen any of my videos before and you're just now joining me because <coughs> <coughs> that was a juicy one. Ow. Ugh. Like really acidy. If you're just joining my channel for the first time, welcome. <laughs> I burp all the time on camera. I hope that doesn't offend you. If it does, I don't. I don't care. Girls gotta burp. Anyway, if you've never watched my channel before, just know that today's video is gonna be a little bit different than what I normally do. What I normally do is when I talk about my eating disorder and I educate people about it and I talk about things that I've experienced with it, I tend to try, it, it was my goal in the beginning to keep these videos very um, kind of upbeat, I guess, like have a little bit of upbeat music and put some funny things in there and, and let my personality run wild because it makes people feel comfortable if I'm just myself and I burp and I do whatever I want. Um, and so I just really try and do that to make other people feel comfortable, not only watching my videos, but also to give them the courage that they need to talk about it. And the more comfortable they feel about the subject, the more likely they're um, able to talk about their own eating disorder or depression or anxiety or any mental disorder that they're struggling with and then that would then help them by talking about it. So normally just know that this video is going to be a little bit different than how I normally do it. I'm not going to have the upbeat music. I'm not going to have um, too much joking around in this video um, for two reasons. Number one, I'm going to be talking, obviously you could see it in the title, I'm going to be talking about another suicide attempt from a long time ago and then I'm also just not feeling well today and I'm also feeling very, very depressed today. And I decided today maybe I would just try something different and let like the, the, the hard part of me come out a little bit more. It comes out once in a while. Once in a while I'll do very, very serious videos. Um, once in a blue moon I will cry. Um, but today I just wanted to just talk about how I'm feeling. I'm also going to be making this a two-part video. So today I'm going to tell you the story of... Um, the suicide attempt that I had when I was younger and then tomorrow um, it'll be the same video but I'm gonna cut it into two parts and tomorrow I'm gonna talk about what is going on with me personally right now that's making it so difficult for me to want to you know live and stuff so I'm hoping that by telling this suicide story that it will remind me of my worth and remind me why I'm here and I also know that I always get so much support from all of you and so much uplifting comments and emails and all of that stuff so thank you for that and if you have any more I would love to hear it today because I need it today so okay so let's get into it you guys missed my last suicide story um, I will put the video I will put the link in the description below so go check that out if you want to watch that um, that's the only other one that I would consider like an actual attempt besides this one that I'm about to tell you about um, because I feel like these two are the only ones where I got close enough that I really almost died, that I could have died within a minute or so. But throughout my life, since I was a little girl, I've been suicidal. I've had suicidal thoughts since I was probably about seven years old. Um, and part of that was due to being bullied in school. Part of it was just due to low self-esteem or, or hard things that were going on at home or things like that. So, um, but as I got older, um, they started to come, the suicidal thoughts started to come so often and I started to plan my suicide attempts. And so probably around when I was in junior high, so probably like 13 years, 13, 14, actually right around when my bulimia started is when I started actually planning things in my head. Um, and my very first attempt, um, besides this other one that's in the link below, um, was when I was 16 years old and this is something that I had been thinking about for about t two or three years because um, somebody in our neighborhood, a boy that was just a couple years older than me, committed suicide this way and ever since he had done that, I had been thinking about that idea and I kept going with that idea and I kept thinking and I kept planning but it never happened. But this is the story of when it actually happened. So. I was about 16 years old, just started driving. It was about two years after the divorce and um, my mom had just gotten remarried and we had moved 
I don't everywhere and I had gained a lot of weight at the time and I was being bullied in high school and it was just a really hard time for me so I decided maybe it was time to do this so I was supposed to be at a um, football game and I was at the football game but I left early because I was feeling very insecure and and like that day that exact day on the bus on the way to school that morning um, one of the girls who was in my neighborhood who was really mean to me sometimes was, was just bullying me kind of extra hard that day and um, so that day happened to be like the tip of the iceberg of like a week of events of being bullied at high school uh, by other like boys calling me fat in front of like a whole parking lot of people like they almost hit me with their car and rolled out their windows and were like get out of the road fatty you fat fudger and it was just really it, it was just a bad week and probably like 9 30 10 o'clock at night so I should have been coming home from the football game but I was already home um, but I was just sitting in the garage and I closed the garage and I left the car running and I rolled down the windows and I decided that it was time. <laughs> that it was just time for it to happen. And I just remember thinking while the garage was like filling with fumes, I couldn't really see it, but I could feel it, I could smell it. I have a very strong sense of smell too, so I smelled it like right away. And I just remember breathing it in and laying back and I remember thinking to myself, should I write a suicide note? No, because then that would just make mom feel more sad about this and that would make other people obsess about, you know, like I still cared in my mind about other people. Um, but then I thought to myself, you know what? You're not really needed on this earth. You're actually quite worthless and you're actually quite stupid and you're actually quite unaware of the problems and the troubles that you're causing your family and your friends and everybody who knows you. You're failing at school. You suck at school. You're sick all the time. You don't have a lot of good friends. You don't, you have a lot of people that are telling you every day that you're fat and ugly and worthless. Like your family has so much other stuff going on. They wouldn't even notice if you're gone. They don't even need you around. Like all of these horrible, horrible feelings started coming to my brain which caused me to stay there and which caused me to wait and just wait to die. Um, and so probably about 10 minutes into it, um, I even like I started to feel dizzy and I started to feel sick. And like I, I'm pretty sure I was getting close to the point where I was about to pass out and then die eventually. Um, but it was about 10 minutes into it and my phone rang and I looked at the phone and it was coming from the house. I had a cell phone. It was coming from the house and I was like, should I answer it? Should I not? No, like they don't even know I'm actually here. I'm in the garage, but they don't know that. Should I answer it? If I do, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And I struggled for like forever and I never answered it. And then the phone rang again, again. And I was like, oh, good heavens. Is this a sign? Should I maybe not be doing this? Um, no, but seriously, I was like, what What do I say? What if they know I'm in the garage? What? What's my excuse? Like, I just kept thinking and like obsessing over what to say if I did answer the phone. And so finally I was like, no, I'm not gonna answer the phone because it's just, I don't even know what I would say. Um, but then the phone rang the third time and something in me, I don't even know what, I can't even explain it. Um, I'm pretty sure it was God or an angel or somebody from a very good place helping me um, to push the green button and answer the phone. So I answered the phone and it was my mom. And she's like, hi honey, I know you're at the football game, but would you mind on your way home stopping and getting me a gallon of milk? Um, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And I hung up with her. And I don't know why, but something so stupid, so meaningless as my mom needing a gallon of milk from the store was enough to me to say, somebody in this world needs you. 
whether it's for this moment of where you need to go get the milk at the store and bring it back to her, whether if it's just that she needs you to get a gallon of milk, um, we don't know. But go get the gallon of milk and see how you feel. And I did. I left, rolled up the windows. Actually, I let it air out after I got out of the garage and then I rolled up the windows. I drove to the store. I got her a gallon of milk. I brought the gallon of milk back to her. I put it in the fridge and I went down in my room and I just went to sleep. And the next day, um, I remember thinking it was weird that I went, but right, but because I don't sleep, you guys. I don't sleep at night. I don't know if you know that about me. Um, I don't sleep at night, even growing up ever since I was little. I don't sleep at night, but I felt right asleep that night. And the next day, I woke up feeling um, just this, this feeling of, like, gratitude towards not only my mom for saving my life, but also towards God for having her call me and... Again, even it was even if it was just so stupid as just to go get her a gallon of milk, it was enough to snap me out of it. It was enough to let me know, okay, you know what, maybe I am needed, even if just for that moment. And I think sleeping on it later and then waking up in the morning with a fresh mind, I think I was able to realize that day my worth and my place in this world and my place in my family and my place with my friends. So yeah, suicide for me has always come and gone. The thoughts have been there my whole life, but um, it's very rare that I have acted on it, um, or at least to the point where I almost died. So I'm very grateful for my mom. I'm very grateful for God. I'm very grateful for whatever angel or God or spirit or whatever was with me that made me push that button to answer that phone and I think I also need to give myself some credit. I would not have done that back then, but now um, thinking about it and talking about it with you guys and knowing how much that I have grown in the past few months by doing these videos, um, I'm to the point now where it's important that I recognize the good that was in myself growing up because um, one of the things that keeps me sick is constantly reminding myself of the stupid things I did growing up or the worthlessness worthlessness that I am or yeah so I just need to acknowledge that um, there was a part of me that did care that night that that thought I should answer the phone and 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 not just that like there was a part of me that said mom needs milk go get the milk like it wasn't like I need to give myself some credit. I'm not sure how to do that, I guess, but I know that I deserve some credit and I need to acknowledge that or else I'm never going to get better because I'm going to feel guilty about it forever. But I need to realize that um, I did have a good heart and I did, I did not want to hurt anybody. And like up to the last point of should I write a suicide note or not? Like, I mean, would that hurt my mom's feelings more or less? Like, obviously I still cared. Obviously I still cared about everybody else and I still to this day care about everybody else. And that has been my lifesaver. And um, yeah, I'm gonna end this video here and I'm gonna continue this talk tomorrow. I'm gonna do it right now, but you're not gonna see the rest of it till tomorrow. Um, and I'm just gonna talk through how I'm feeling right now and other things that I'm thinking and feeling and that I feel like I need to talk about. So join me tomorrow for that. <sighs> Sorry, mom, but thanks for saving my life. I love you, mommy. Okay. And I love all of you too. And I, <sighs> Ugh, good heavens. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow to continue this video. I love you all so much, and I'm so grateful for you all, and I'm so grateful for all of your uplifting comments and likes and shares and subscribersness and subscribe and share and like and comment. Please leave me a comment. I love the comments. Um, they sometimes just save me for the day, and I really appreciate that. So thank you, and I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. You are beautiful. You are worth it. And I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.